ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر النفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد dear sisters and brothers in islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh سَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا مِنْ دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاحَيْهِ إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Qur'an Kareem There is no creature on or within the earth or bird that flies with its wings except that they are communities like you. So Allah is telling us that we can learn from other creatures because they live as communities as we do. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many creature, creatures in the Quran for guidance. The focus of the khutbah today is on one creature, one of the smallest creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, which is the nahla, which is the honeybee. If I am invited to do another khutbah, inshallah, I will focus on another creature that we can learn from. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim Wa'awha rabbuka ilan nahli an ittakhidhi min al-jibali biyutan wa min al-shajari wa mimma ya'rushun thumma kuli min kulla thamarati fasluki subula rabbiki dhulula yakhruju min butuniha sharabun mukhtalifun alwanuhu fihi shifa'un linnas inna fi thalika la'ayatan liqawmin yatafakkaroon and I'm going to put emphasis on this as I go through the khutbah. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لَقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Translation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awha, inspired the honeybee. Telling and demanding, commanding the honeybee. Take your habitations in the mountains and the trees and in what they construct. Then eat from all of the fruits and follow the ways of your Lord made easy for you. There emerges from their bellies a drink, honey, varying in colors, in which there is healing for people. Verily, in this is indeed a sign for people who think. So indeed, a sign for people who think. Let's think about that. So if we focus on the people who think, typically, well, let's say generally, you hear something like the Quran or the khutbah. You listen, you process, you understand, and then you act, you implement. But typically that doesn't happen. Typically we hear the Quran or the khutbah on advice or guidance, we're not really listening because our minds are somewhere else. Therefore, we're not understanding what the message is. Ultimately, we're not acting. So in an effort to be among those people who think, I will share with you lessons, guidance, examples from the life of a bee that can be inspiring to all of us, inshallah. What is so special about the bee that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored this creature and named the surah Nahla after, after it. So we will look at it in two ways. Okay, so follow my thought process. In one way, we're going to look at the outlook, the attitude of the bee, of the honeybee. And another way, we're going to look at the actions, the behavior of the bee. So I'm going to be asking a lot of questions during the khutbah, rhetorical, you can't answer, to make you think, people who think. That is the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So first question, do you see the world 
from the lens of a honeybee or do you see the world from the lens of the fly, the dubaba? Okay, let's ex explore. When the honeybee wakes up in the morning, their outlook is an outlook of happiness. Why? Because their source of food are flowers. So they seek the source of beauty, the source of happiness, the source of sweetness, cleanness, nice fragrance, sunshine. They look for the good qualities of their food. Flowers, the source of happiness, when somebody feels bad or sick, we send them flowers to bring smiles to their faces and make them feel better. So their outlook is outlook of happiness, looking for the good in their food. Let's take the dubaba, the fly on the other hand. Wake up in the morning, it is the outlook of Sadness, uh, so they look for destruction, they look for corruption, they look for uh, filth and dirt and bad odor and bad leftover, uh, they look for darkness, they look for the bad qualities of their food. Let me bring this to life through a story, as I was doing my search on this topic, I came across a link, and I want to, Jazallah Khair, Brother Nabil, I believe he shared, us, he shared that uh, with us, and I think it's relevant to the uh, topic of the khutbah. So there was a, um, a wife who went to psychologist, sheikh, psychiatrist, uh, complaining about her husband, and she wants a divorce. So the, the sheikh, the psychologist said, well, let me ask you a few questions to understand the situation a little bit better. So he said, his first question, uh, is your phone ringing? Um, the second question was, um, is he respectful of you and your parents? Yes, he is. Is he good to your parents? Yes, he is. As a matter of fact, my mother loves him more than she loves her own kids. Okay? Is he Kareem generous or stingy? No, he is Kareem. He's, he's generous. Uh, is he good with the kids? Yes, he is. So he asked 12, 13 questions. He said, okay, give me his phone number. I'll call him. I'll convince him to divorce you, and then I'll marry him someone else. And she said, how, how are you going to do that? Well, because every woman on earth is looking for these qualities in her husband. So I can easily find a woman that can appreciate these qualities that he can marry. She did not give him the phone number. Months went by, and he runs into her at a conference. So he approaches her and said, how is the situation with your husband? And she said, Absher, you know, good news. My husband changed. SubhanAllah. So the husband did not change. But what changed? She started to look at her husband from the lens of a honeybee, looking at her husband for the good qualities of her husband, and not looking at her husband from the lens of a fly, which is the bad qualities of her husband. SubhanAllah. So now that we reflected on the outlook of the honeybee, Let's look at the behavior, the actions of the honeybee. And with that, we'll start with the hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Translation. So the Prophet Sallallahu is saying, he's swearing, by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad. So he's not saying by Allah. He is that serious. By the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad. The believer is like the honeybee. The example of the believer is like the example of the honeybee. Which eats that is good, pure, and wholesome. And produces that is pure and good and wholesome. When it lands on something, it does not break it, it does not corrupt it, it does not destruct it. 
So listen to how serious the Prophet ﷺ is. Not that he's swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he's advising us as a mu'min, as a human being, to be like the bee. How so? So, before we reflect on the narration, let's reflect on the actions of the honeybee versus the action of the fly, the adubaba. <coughs> The fly does not produce anything. The honeybee produces honey, which is shifa, which is healing for all mankind. Even the bad quality of the bee that we consider bad quality, the sting, the poison, it's been used as medicine and therapy in many parts of the world, subhanAllah. So there is nothing about the honeybee that we can say it is bad. The fly, tra- the, the fly transports diseases. The honeybee, they cross-pollinate. They bring pollen, life, to the flowers. The fly lives in the dirtiest environment. The honeybee lives in the most cleanest, the most sterile environment, environment, actually. The fly's motto is to take and not give anything, which is mentioned in the Quran. The honeybee's motto is to give and to take. It actually gives more than it takes, and we'll talk about that. Now let's reflect on the hadith, and we can share with you some guidance and appreciation of the actions of the honeybee based on the hadith of the Prophet It eats well. Akal at So the source of the risk of their sustenance is from a pure source. It's from the freshest flowers, flowers that have not been touched by another bee before. As a mu'min, our source of risk or sustenance should also be pure, not from riba or alcohol or drugs or gambling. So this part, it is a straightforward part. <coughs> now, let's move to waqa'at falam taksir walam tufsid. That was a really challenging to come up, extrapolate some guidance on that. But subhanAllah, we can go all day uh, explaining that. So I've come up with few lessons. One, relationships. So there is an advice about relationships in this. How so? The flower and the bee has a relationship. It's a give and take relationship. So the bee comes with a gift. Anytime it approaches a flower, it has pollen. And pollen is essential for fertilization and reproduction to take place. It gives life to the flower. It takes a little bit of nectar, so it gives more than it takes. It's not selfish nor greedy. Sisters, how are your relationships with your husbands? Brothers, how are your relationships with your wives? Do you give more than you take? Or do you take more than you give? How are your relationships with your kids? Well, my kids don't talk to me, they don't spend time with me. Well, ask. Why is that? It's not just a phase they're going through. We can't always blame that phase on them. A little bit of truth, but not always. How is your relationship with your community members? The one you're sitting next to, behind you, in front of you? Is that a give and take relationship between between, between our community members. It is good to be generous with your love and attention and time to your family members, to your neighbors, to your community members. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is trying to tell us. This is gonna hurt, uh, but you have to find where the wound is to treat it. How is your relationship with the masjid? The masjid is the flower. You're the honeybee. You're approaching the masjid. Let's go step by step. You come in with your car and you want to park. Are you parking where you're supposed to be parking? So, falam taksir, walam tufsid, right? So it doesn't distract and it doesn't cause an inconvenience. Are you parking where you're supposed to be parking? 
Are you parking in a, in a, in a handicapped parking space we're not supposed to? When you're parking, are you damaging the parking lot? Are you causing an inconvenience for your fellow brothers and Muslims? It happens every Friday. <laughs> it happens in every occasion we get together when we have more than 50 people, subhanAllah. So we park and we enter the masjid and we enter the bathroom and we're going to do wudu. Are you leaving your slippers on the floor for somebody else to pick them up or somebody to trip over them? Are you leaving the water running? Are you leaving the bathroom unflushed? So you do your wudu and then you come and you pray and then you go have dinner at the masjid. Which alhamdulillah this community has been striving and has been reviving in the last few years, more so in the last two or three years. So our get together are often, and now with the family night that we have on the last Saturday of every month, uh, alhamdulillah, inshallah, keep that in your, in, in your mind and, and join us. Um, so the honeybee takes a little bit of the food, right? So we see brothers and sisters have piles of food on the plate. It's okay if you can eat it, but not throw it away. Not, there's, that's destruction, that's facade. We ate the food. Are we cleaning up after ourselves? Or for somebody else to clean up? Um, are we putting the burden on the volunteers, the few volunteers that stay extra two or three hours to clean the mess that we've made? Uh, let's move to another lesson, inshallah. The honeybee practices emotional intelligence. So those, for you, or those of you who are interested in leadership principles. So as it approaches the flower, the flower is delicate. The petals are soft and delicate. The honeybee is heavy. It knows that if it approaches the flower violently and lands on it, it will break it. Right? So what it does, it is respectful, it is kind, it is gentle, it is thoughtful, it is considerate that it hovers its wing, so it just lands soft enough to take that little bit of nectar. Are you gentle with your wife? This is a question, all these questions for me too, by the way. Are we gentle with our kids? Are we gentle with our neighbors? Are we gentle with one another? Is the AC committee gentle with its community members? Are the community members gentle with the AC committee? Are the AC members gentle with one another? Again, indeed, there is a sign for people to think. So we're going to be asking a lot of questions for you to contemplate upon. If you are having a bad day, that's your challenge, not the challenge of others, right? So you're having a bad day, you go to the office, he's having a bad day today, everybody needs to avoid this person. The honeybee realizes that the bad day, the bad headache, it is the weight of it. So when it approaches, it, uh, it finds a solution to the problem, that the challenge that this honeybee has. It says, okay, so I know I'm heavy, I know I'm having a bad day, I'm not going to ruin anybody else's bad day, so I'm going to hover, right? So if you have a bad day, you yourself need to learn how to deal with that, not your office staff, not your wife, not your kids, not your community members. It is your challenge and your challenge only. So start looking at it from a lens of a honeybee and not the lens from the fly. The same weight analogy of the honeybee, it is the same as the pressure and the demands that we put on our kids. Do our kids have to go to medical school? Do they have to be engineers? Let's follow, let them follow their passion, whatever it may take them. Is my approach with my community members my highway or my way or the highway? It's a give and take. That approach does not, does not work. 
That's what the honeybee is trying to tell us. I have my challenges, I am dealing with it on how to treat other flowers, other communities. So we extrapolate these lessons from the honeybee. Another lesson. The honeybee is selective of the flowers. So they travel collectively 55,000 miles to choose their flowers, to produce just about a pound of honey. 55,000 miles, and they select the freshest flowers, the flowers that have not been touched before. And by the way, when they go to a flower, and they realize that that flower has established a relationship from a bee from another hive, it leaves it alone. So when someone comes to work, and someone now is your boss, they have enough respect for that position that they leave it alone. That is their sustenance, that is their risk, that is their way of living. And they go on about their own flower. Same thing for any position in a charitable organization or any organization. Question, are we selective with our friends? So we have a saying, tell me who your friends are, I'll tell you what character you are, correct? or you are the sum average of your friends. The last khutbah we did, we talked about how important, the importance of friends, that they can lead you or mislead you. So, if they travel 55,000 miles to select certain flowers, shouldn't we be also selective of who enter our lives as friends? Because their uh, uh, presence can be of good or evil. But if we're not surrounding ourselves with people who are good, you're going to be guilty by association if they're rude and disrespectful and hateful. Another lesson. The honeybee teaches us, teaches us unity, how to build a community, and how to care for a community. So a hive, like a masjid, it can consist up to 60,000 bees, and they all get along, the Arabs and the Indupak. 60,000 bees all get along. Every bee has a role in that community. They have their guard, Basra. They don't allow any bee from another hive to enter or any bee from another species to enter. They have the ones that collect the nectar, the ones that build the wax, the ones that uh, keep the hive cool, and they have a leader. And guess who the leader is? It's a female leader. I'm gonna stop for five seconds and let you think about that. A female leader giving instructions to 60,000 bees. We have one female leader on the EC committee and we want to kick her out. What's your relationship with your wife, your mother, your sister, your daughter? Are we empowering our ladies to be leaders or are we suppressing them? and being followers. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet. This is not Ali speaking. If we want to be like the bee, <laughs> then we would follow what the bee does. So who is the ruler in the house? I'm not, my wife is. Rightfully so, the prime minister of the house. Does it mean the masjid has to be only all male leaders? Does it mean your office has to be all male leaders? Ob obviously not. So every bee has a role. What is your role in the masjid? We got 300 people, 400 people, alhamdulillah, mashallah, we keep growing. What, what is, just ask yourself the question, what, what is your role with your family? What is your role with the masjid? What is your role with the office? If your role is to Alhamdulillah, you are well off financially, 
Jazakallah khair, that's excellent, and obviously that's needed. Continue do, to do that, and may Allah make it in your mizan hasanat. But why not diversify your act of goodness? So if you give money, and you haven't attended any programs, attend one program. If you attend all programs, and don't bring anybody with you, bring somebody with you. If you attend and bring somebody, but you don't share it, the program for others to come, then start sharing it. If you haven't volunteered at all in any of the events, then just raise your hand and volunteer. We have an event, by the way, Tuesday at the Masjid, West Virginia Healthy Kids, and they are honoring um, Sister Ibtisam Barazi as the West Virginian uh, Award. Probably the first Muslim to be awarded this. So if you're able to come on Tuesday, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. أقول قولي هذا وصل الله عز وجل يخفر لنا والمسلمين عامة فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الواحد أحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد My last part uh, brothers and sisters I'll start with I'll give you three messages and I'll start with A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem وَقَالُوا لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ أَوْ نَعْقِلُ مَا كُنَّا فِي أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says the people of hell are saying if we only had listened or reasoned, understood we would not be among the people of the blaze not only the hellfire but the blaze and we keep saying إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَا أَيَهْتِنْ لَقَوْمٍ يَتْفَكَرُونَ So indeed, there's a sound for people who think. So, one, this ayah, it's inspiring us to gain knowledge. This honeybee is inspiring us to seek knowledge and gain knowledge and reflect on the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ and the Qur'an. So that's number one. Number two, when the honeybees work together, they produce honey. And honey, it is a cure, a shifa for all humankind. What are we producing? So we live as, they live as communities as we do. Their community, they produce honey. That is shifa for all mankind. Muslims, non-Muslims, believers, non-believers, all mankind. What are we producing? What is the masjid producing? What is our family producing? What is our mission? Their mission is the production of honey. What is your mission? And thirdly, I would encourage everyone, including me, to get up in the morning and look at the world from the lens of the honeybee, the lens of happiness. You will find blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find ease, and you'll find an easy way of living. Allahumma nidai fa aminu. Allahumma akhfur li mu'mineen, mu'minat, al-muslimin, wa-muslimat, al-ahya'a minu mu'lamuat. Allahumma asalaka aishatan haniyatan. Oh Allah, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, the great ones and the small ones. Grant us the strength to overcome ourselves and give us full advantage of our time and health. Make us people of thought and reflection of the Quran and the words of the Prophet ﷺ. Purify our hearts and actions. So, Ibadullah, in Allah, Malaikat, we salute on Nabi. Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallamu taslima. In Allah, ya amru bil adli wa lihsani wa yitaid wa qurba. When hand al fahsha iwal munkar wa bari, ya adukum la lakum tadakarun. Fathkur Allah, ya ladima athkurkum, washkuru yazudkum. Wa adukur Allah, ya akbar, wallahi ya alamu matasnawan wa akhmis salam.